Sometimes, you know, the Lord is so great, you know. and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska. Native news, native information, and today, native fun. It's a packed show, and we travel from one end of the state to the other. We receive so many phone calls here at our Jeannie Green Production Studio in Anchorage, Alaska. And our viewers want to know who we are, what we do, how long we've been doing it, and what Jeannie Green Productions is all about. Our crew put together a beautiful demo tape just for you to explain who we are and I hope it answers your questions. Also on today's program we travel to beautiful southeast Alaska to a fish hatchery and then on over while we're down there to Cake Alaska we're going to surprise you. You think totem poles are tall? Well hold on to your hat this one is the tallest in the world. And then we end the show with the Native Music Cow, one of the most favorite events in the state of Alaska for Alaska Natives. All that, plus lots more. I'll be back right after this. Heartbeat Alaska is pleased to announce a brand new official hotel. We're brought to you now by Millennium Alaskan Hotel, the official hotel of Heartbeat Alaska. And Heartbeat Alaska is also brought to you by Frontier Airlines. Thank you, Frontier Airlines, for getting Heartbeat Alaska airborne. Hi, I'm Mark from Scan Home, and we are proud to sponsor Heartbeat Alaska. Scan Home, serving all of Alaska's home and office furnishing needs. Thank you, Scan Home, for making Heartbeat Alaska possible. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Brown's Electric Lighting Gallery. Thank you, Brown's Electric, for your generous support of Heartbeat Alaska. So, you want to know who we are, do you? No problem. It's easy. Mike McCormick, our chief editor, brings you this. Oh, and you better turn it up. Turn it up!
Turn it up. Turn it up. Turn it up. Jeannie Green Productions, we don't talk about it, we do it. Native owned and operated, Jeannie Green Productions is Alaska's premier full service video production company dedicated to serving those who want the best. For over a decade, Jeannie Green Productions has brought you stories from villages across the state of Alaska, across the north, across the lower 48, from reservations and villages, sharing the lives of our native people with the rest of the world through our award-winning program, Heartbeat Alaska, a program for our indigenous people about our indigenous people. Can you just make your mark? Yeah. And then you go again, and then you just cut it right there, and you cut it in half. Through hands-on experience, these kids are not only learning the ways of their people, but are experiencing it as well. Okay, these are too big. Look. It's the dedication of the elders and adults of our communities that makes the passing down of tradition possible, but just as important. It takes the desire of our youth to learn these ways. Heartbeat Alaska has become a household name across America. You are watching Heartbeat Alaska from St. Lawrence Island, Savunga, Alaska. <laughs> For the youth of our Bush, Alaska, and on reservations, our program. This generation tells the stories of the youth who face the challenges of living in a world of technology mixed with the traditions of their ancient cultures. Whether you want to know about the past of Alaska's people or the path the future has paved, Jeannie Green Productions leads the way in getting that information to you. Our Emmy-nominated crew produces the highest quality commercials, whether it be for a native-owned business, for everything you'll need to build your dream home, Northern Building Supplies has got you covered. Aquafina. Genie Green Productions gives you the edge you're looking for. From documentaries to feature stories, or training videos to commercials, Genie Green Productions does it all, and at a cost far less than our competitors. Our footage can be seen on the Discovery Channel, and our programs aired nationally across most reservations and across Canada, with future opportunities in Japan and the Scandinavian countries. We are expanding into Washington State with their own brand new program about the native people of the Northwest. And wherever we decide to go next, look out America. When you're looking for quality work with the professional edge, just look up because the sky's the limit for Jeannie Green Productions, America's premier native owned and managed video production company. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Each week, Heartbeat Alaska brings you great stories from all over the state. And we couldn't do it without the generous support of Frontier Flying Service. Frontier gets our camera crews where they need to go. So whenever you see a Frontier plane, give them a wave. 
Say hi from Nooksack. You might just be on Heartbeat Alaska. Frontier Flying Service, covering Alaska for over 50 years. From the moment you enter the doorway at the Millennium Hotel, another world surrounds you. It's a world of friendly faces and cordial service. It's a place of great taste and great tastes. The Millennium Hotel is a haven of relaxation and personal restoration, of attentive service and attention to details. But at the end of the day, we won't read you a bedtime story. Although, would you be surprised if we did? Our editors are fabulous, aren't they? Let's travel now to Southeast Alaska. You know, this is like a showcase of our editors today because Dave Manning put together this piece just for you from one of our most favorite sponsors, the Denali Commission. To the natives in southeast Alaska, this was Kitchen Creek. For generations, it provided salmon for the cake box and Tongass bands of Clinket Indians. It would be hard for them to foresee the fish camp that's called Kitchen, becoming Ketchikan, Alaska's fourth largest city. It would also be hard for them to imagine this. The Deer Mountain Fish Hatchery. What we do here is we have, um, we raise four different kinds of fish here. Um, we do 100,000, or we try for 100,000 king salmon. All of, the, all of the king salmon go down Ketchikan Creek. They just go, we just let them right out into the creek. This is Jerry Guthrie. He's foster father to about 271,000 fish. The fish here get their start like this. We have here is um, coho eggs taken last November. If you look real close, um, you can see they have little eyes in them. Unlike many hatcheries around the state, most of Deer Mountain's income doesn't come from the harvest of fish. It comes from tourism. King salmon are the, the easiest to feed of all the fish. Um, we, we try to put them right up front where the tourists can, can uh, feed them also. Ketchikan is a town built on fishing and lumber, but as these industries continue to struggle, the hatchery continues to adapt. We keep about 2,000 of the rainbow trout, and we had um, the Forest Service sponsors a uh, kids derby in uh, a second Saturday in uh, June. They buy them from us, it's one of our few funding sources here at the hatchery. But when the hatchery's main building desperately needed repairs. Right here is a supporting um, post. It had rotted. They were able to get help from the First Alaskan Foundation. The foundation is one of the many organizations around the state of Alaska that the Denali Commission partners with. The commission knows the people closest to the problem are the best ones to fix it. And they pride themselves on, on having a very limited staff. So what they do then is they turn around and go find partners out in the uh, public and private sector to try to work with them. And so they minimize their uh, 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 need for staff and utilize partners like ourselves at Ada and Alaska Energy Authority to go out and do the planning and a necessary construction to uh, get some of these projects accomplished. A small investment at just the right time kept the roof from falling in on these little fish. It also meant the natives here will be able to continue to earn a living from this little stream called Kutgin. The Denali Commission, Alaskans, working together to build a better Alaska. Don't go away. We'll, we'll be, be right back. back. <laughs> You're late, Dad. I know, I know. I'm almost done with my homework. Yeah? Tessa's mad at you. What's mad at me about? You said you would play basketball with her. She said she'll never speak to you again. 
<laughs> Parents that are involved with their kids are more likely to help keep their kids away from drugs. Okay. <laughs> Nothing but that. <laughs> now let's showcase the editing of editor John Crabb. Dave Manning recently traveled to Southeast Alaska, took the video, and John brought this story to you. Here's Cake Alaska. Located in Southeast Alaska on Kupernoff Island, Cake Alaska could be characterized as moderate. Cool, mild summers, moderate winter temperatures, not too much rain, not a lot of snow, and a moderate population of about 800 people. Mostly Clinket natives with average jobs in the timber and fishing industries. But one thing about Cake is far from moderate or average. In 1967, the Clinket elders of Cake decided to carve a totem pole. But not just any totem pole. They chose to carve a pole that depicted all the tribes and clans of the area. So that's just what they did. And from a single tree emerged a totem pole stretching 132 and one half feet into the sky. The tallest single tree totem pole in the world. Cake resident Ellie Jackson takes us for a visit to this wooden wonder of Southeast Alaska. Decided that they wanted to carve a totem pole and they wanted it to be the world's tallest totem pole. And this totem pole represents all of the native tribes in Alaska, from the Clinkets, Hylas, and Simpsons. And on the pole, you could see um, the crests from all the clans here locally in Cake. And if you look on it, you could see them like, for example, the shark, the brown bear, the killer whale, and the three uh, figures in the middle represent the three tribes, the Haida's, Clinkets, and the Simpsons. And they were all holding hands, but our elders wanted this pole carved so that it would recapture our culture and our heritage so our people would would never forget who they are, where they came from, and what we stand for. Isn't this great? You get to see the editing of our fabulous, fabulous group. Every week they work hard to bring you stories about your village and your neighborhood, like this one. Recently in Anchorage, the Native Musicale attracted thousands, as it does every single year, one of our most favorite events. I was there. Hello and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska, Native News and Native Information. I'm in the backstage of West High Auditorium. We're getting ready for the 36th annual Native Musicale. It's an exciting event. We're going to go out front and we're going to meet your friends and neighbors from all over the state. Gathering as they do every single year to share their gospel music with one another. It's so neat. Come on, let's go. Every year for the past 36 years, Native people from across the state of Alaska have come together in one auditorium to sing their hearts out for the Lord Jesus Christ. From the far reaches of northern Alaska to the southeast Panhandle, Native Alaskans and their families come to Anchorage to take part in the annual Native Musicale. Why do you come here? It's just listening to the music and meeting the friends that I haven't seen in a year or you know my high school friends for like 20 years or so and I finally see them and you know we get to talk and stuff. This is my friend she was my theater instructor in costumes. <laughs> it's true. It's a big thing for the people who attend this event as well as for the musicians who have traveled hundreds of miles to be here. For this group of musicians Tuning up their guitars is the first step to preparing for their performance. But tuning up their minds and souls is by far the most important step. To me, the groups coming in are real exciting and get to uh, meet them every year and to meet new groups coming in. 
And we stress that one of the things that we really stress is that we want the Lord to be glorified in all the songs and the testimonies or whatever their group is bringing to the Native Muse Kelly, God would get the glory. And how he's answered that prayer is so exciting for us to see. This group from Kodiak Island has been performing at the Native Musical for some time now. You've sung how since when? Um, about 13 years, probably. We've oh, had a group here. Real pros at this. Oh no, not pros, but we have sung here before. What is yeah. important? What is important about this musical? What's important about being here? Bringing our Native people to the Lord. Yeah. As the crowds fill the auditorium, the musicians and singers line up to make their grand entrances onto the stage. This is perhaps the hardest part of the entire show, waiting for their moment on stage. But when the music starts, the nerves are left behind and the spotlight turns to God. It's an event that holds quite the history. President of the Anchorage Native New Life Board, Donald Shugak, recalls the first Native musical 36 years ago. It started originally with uh, Victory High School when Wally Bays was up there. And we started in Anchorage uh, in the early 70s. It was like early, late 60s, probably. And we started at Carpenter's Hall over there. That's when I was a freshman or sophomore at Victory High School when the Native Music Hall started. First one, there was quite a few people. It was really amazing how many people actually came to the uh, Native Music Hall at the Carpenter, Carpenter's Hall. I, I'll bet it was at least three quarters full when we were there. And I think it was on a weekend that we were. So it was a, it was a pretty neat experience to be part of it right from the start you know, and to go on to what it is today. Today, the Native Musical hosts between 50 and 60 musical groups and individuals, all who have come to praise the Lord through song and fellowship. I think the capacity for uh, West High Auditorium is something like 1,900, and we've had it over three quarters full every night, so I'd say about 1,500 people, 12 to 1,500 people a night that came to attend that five nights. And they all seem to enjoy it. They just sit back, relax, and enjoy the whole thing. generation youth group from Wainwright, Alaska and we fundraise money to go on gospel trips and sing for people and we fundraise money at home when we have cakewalks and um, we sing at people's houses and try to make money so we can go on trips. And this is their first time performing at the Native Music Hall. They came here from the North Slope Borough from Wainwright, Alaska, 100 miles south of Barrow. They came to share their voices with the thousands of people attending this year's event. I'm excited because it's my first, first time to Anchorage. Ever? What do you think? That I'm gonna have fun and I've been having fun so far. And that seems to be the common thread amongst those who have come here, whether it be to perform or to watch and listen. The most exciting thing to see is that this is God's work, and I'm just fitting into it, you know, and, and uh, to see how all these different organizations, different groups and individuals, uh, audio and visual, and how it all just seems to fall right into place. 
it does fall right into place, but it takes the efforts of volunteers and coordinators to make it happen. Well, it's one of the highest tech shows that we do here at West um, for rental groups that come in. Um, we try to do it a week ahead, so we're setting up everything, all the sound systems and hanging their big drop a week ahead. We're hooking up a lot of mic lines, um, a lot of the monitor speakers, um, hooking up. We've got two mixers involved in this particular show. The lights are already pretty well set, but, but hanging the drop, that takes quite a while. It's 720 pounds, so it, it takes, takes about eight of us to do it. So we've tried to make it a lot easier for the people coming in. But it's worth it to those who have poured themselves into getting ready for this event, especially when the crowd and stage are filled with the faces of our Native youth who are here to praise the Lord. One of the things that we prayed um, for at the Native Musicale was that we would get more young people involved in this because they need to be involved with their church or their group of uh, whoever or whatever it is and uh, we pray that the young people would start getting involved in it. and we're starting to see answers to prayer in that area you know the young people coming in and taking part and we're just hoping that that will the Lord will continue to bless that prayer that's our purpose is to uh, get help from God you know we want people to be saved and that's the main purpose, and to encourage Christian people. And we are, we have been encouraged by many, many groups and their wonderful singing and their testimony in the Lord and the power of prayer. Robin Kayutelik from Shishmaref, Alaska, was one of those blessings that was bestowed upon this event. Accompanied by Archie Swan on guitar, Robin captivated the audience with her gift from God and to God. I'm just always on my side. I'm here because I just like to sing and my mom teached me how to sing and my grandma did. She helped me with it and I just came here to sing tonight. No matter what the reasons for being here, the fact that thousands of people from across the state have come together year after year under one roof to worship Jesus Christ is a blessing by itself. What we hope that people will walk away with is that they'll see that God gets all the glory for what happens at Native, uh, Native Music Cal. It's the Lord that we want to glorify and the outreach for Him. We want people to understand that the Native Music Cal is a time when they could come in and find out more about God. And if they don't, if they don't know Him, then find somebody that can lead them to the Lord and we've seen that happen this year. That's pretty exciting. To purchase a VHS copy of this program, have your credit card number ready and call area code 907-563-7440 or mail $20 check or money order to Jeannie Green Productions, 6216 Old Seward Highway, Anchorage, Alaska 99518. Ask for the program number listed below. Thank you so much for joining us for this very special, very fun Heartbeat Alaska. Join us next week for more stories, won't you? And keep those letters coming in and those phone calls. God bless every single one of you, and we'll see you again next week. And all the trouble of today will then be over. For God will wipe all the teardrops from our eyes.